lots of different um, different entertainers, and I I think to myself how often I say, oh boy, God only knows. Anybody else have that? No, God only knows. And the assurance there is that I know there's a, a God, and so I'm pretty sure that when I say God only knows, I'm giving it up to that energy that I understand as that presence and power that is permeating everything and all, all things that are happening. So this month we're talking about, we're sort of taking a leap of, of faith in our capacity to talk about this topic, because talking about a new version of God is a little bit uh, tricky. We're talking about God 2.0. And this is, this is based on the work of Deepak Chopra. And he's talking about making God relevant to our life experience. And I like what he says. He says, every age creates a God that serves only for a little while. And when we have that perception or that God perception, that gives us assurance that there is a real and an invisible source of all that is. Now the problem is, that we need a really useful God in our experience of life because life, that's what gives us meaning, right? God matters. It matters, and I don't care. I'm using the word God today because I think we have a general understanding of what the word God normally refers to. Is that true? But I am clear that many people in this room call God by different names. You might call God love or light or source or mind or infinite intelligence. You have your own or friend or the beloved. You might call God whatever, right? I'm using the word God, so help me translate that for you as you're moving forward with this into what I'm saying. Is that is that a deal? Okay. So we all need a real and useful perception of this thing we call God, right? Because it matters to us. It matters to the choices we make. It matters how we live our life. There's something so important about this energy that God is that it makes a difference in our lives every single moment. Why? Why is that the truth? Because most of us as human beings, in trying to make sense, you know, we're very lucky because we're the only ones that have the capacity to be self-reflective and try to make meaning out of this complex experience that we're having, all the details that go on. And let me tell you, I like what he says, the Deepak Chopra says about creating a God that's useful for the age in which we live, because guess what? Our version of God, or our perception of God today, is probably very different than the caveman's version of God. And let me tell you, the caveman had a version of God. Do you understand? Because we're digital, we understand about light, we know about quantum theory. Our, our, uh, Ken Wilber says, God's on a conveyor belt, and our perception of God goes right along with everything else that happens in our life experience, with our evolution on the planet. Does that make sense? Yes. And so, how we experience God is going to be woven into the tapestry of our worldview, of our experience in the moment. How I view God is going to be different right this minute than the way I viewed God when I was three years old, or seven, or twelve, or maybe even sixty. Mm -hmm. It's always revealing itself in new ways through whatever we're going through. And the God that we create for ourselves, this energy that we create for ourselves, has to fit into our understanding of what life's all about. It's got to fit. So I don't have a lot of relevance in my life for the god of the volcano. Because that's not my experience. That experience is not woven into my tapestry. We've all got our own tapestries. Deepak Chopra says God is as we are. And in fact, the whole universe is as we are because our human minds evolve to make God possible, useful, and real. We create these perceptions. We create it through our thoughts. We get to design the God that fits our needs in the moment. Isn't that encouraging? That's very encouraging. And this is the thing. God doesn't really care. God doesn't care if you believe in it or not. God could care less. God's always there. It's always been there. It always will be there. We might not notice it. Everywhere present, 
There's nowhere that God is not. God's not someplace else. We don't have to wait and find God in the in the heavenly you know, realms. We don't have to wait for the future. God's right here, right now. And this is the tricky part. God's in everything, even the icky stuff. Even the icky stuff. And we don't like to embrace that, do we? We want to just see God in all the goodies, all the good stuff. And what I know is, no matter what, God's available to everybody all the time. <clears throat> Same amount, no matter who, no matter what. That idea that God is like the sun and it shines on everybody and everything equally. Nobody gets more God than the next guy. Nobody. But this is the problem. This is the problem and this is what we see on our planet right now. This is what we are embracing. This is why, this is why common ground is a unique place. Because <coughs> most of the way that we know God through down through the centuries has been through what? Religion. It's been through religion. And this is the deal. God doesn't care what religion you are. Could care less. God does not care about that because God, the concept of God, source, love, light, radiance, being, beloved, whatever, God is not limited by any of the boxes that religion puts God into. The concepts, the stories, the scriptures, all of that stuff, God is not limited by any of that. We don't find God by thinking. We don't find God by reading a holy book. God just is. Now, those things could be prompts. Those things can inspire us, but that's not where we find God, where we experience and know God. That's what we're talking about today. And the way we know God, your way to know God is no better and no worse than mine. We all get to know God in a unique way. So if you have people in your life that think that their way is the only way, we see a lot of that in the, in the world today, don't we? We see a lot of people saying there's only one way to experience the divine. And if you're not with us, you're against us, and so you're our enemy. So we have to separate ourselves from you, or we have to kill you. Yes, isn't that going on right now? A lot of that is going on right now. Guess what? We can know all about God. We can experience God, and we never have to know what we would just think. We now never have to read one holy text. We never have to know one single scripture. We never have to know any of those, those um, details about Buddhism or Hinduism or Christianity or uh, Islam or any of that stuff. We don't need to know any of that because we can experience God directly as a direct experience. But the thing is, and here at Common Ground, we're trying to bridge that gap. We're trying to figure out how do we create an environment where we can all have an understanding that we have permission to experience God, to know God in a unique way, and at the same time bring it together in community. This is tricky, folks. This is very tricky. How do we do that? How do we bring that all together? And so we, what we need is a model similar to what we're creating here. We need a model that has an understanding of religion and all the rules and the beautiful stories. Aren't some of the stories beautiful? The beautiful stories from the religious traditions? But at the same time, we're not bound to that. That's what we're trying to create here. This, this common ground where we can come and know God. Know God. Not know about God. Not read about God. But know God as an individual personal expression. Know that. Because how we know God is very personal. Very personal. And this is the deal. We personify our experience of God to make it useful and real for ourselves, don't we? So think about it. What do you call your God? What is your God? How do you refer to your God? What qualities does your God bring to you? Is it comfort? Is it hope? Is it light? Is it love? What is it? What are the qualities? And this is the deal. The more expanded your awareness is, in general, the more inclusive your worldview is, in general, the more balanced you are in your walk in the world, in general, the bigger your God is. The more expansive your God is. The more allowing your perception of this divine energy is. So that you don't have to say, oh, your God's different than mine, you're my enemy. No, no. The more inclusive we get, the more expanded we get, the more 
The more we can see the whole picture, the bigger our picture of God gets. And so really, we don't need a new religion. We just need an expanded view. The, the, the religions we have are good enough. They've got great stories. They've got beautiful traditions. Many of you here, I, I think of Ramon. Ramon came from a beautiful Catholic tradition. Ramon loves that tradition. Right, Ramon? He loves the silence. He studied to be a monk. Decided it wasn't quite big enough. Wasn't quite big enough for him. <laughs> well, it's true. The box wasn't big enough. God wasn't big enough in that setting. God's bigger than, than that understanding. Is that true, Ramon? That's true. But, and this is my point, Ramon loves Catholicism. He loves the church. He loves the, all the beauty and the grace of the Catholic setting. True? And sometimes Ramon goes to Mass before he comes to Common Ground. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm talking about. This is how we do it. We, we allow religion to do its job to be rich and beautiful and, and inspirational and, and we allow ourselves to know God in our own way. A big God, a bigger God that might be outside of the confines of that one religion. And this is what I know. It's got to match whatever our experience of God is. It's got to match whatever's going on in our world right now today. For Ramon, his, his personal knowing of God began to push at the boundaries of the seminary. It began to push at the boundaries of that narrow way to see God. And all of a sudden, he found a new way to be present with this energy that he knows to be this God energy. So, this is the deal. If you're, if you're very connected to Christianity, and you happen to have some sort of epiphany, and it's a, a white light experience, you're probably going to see Jesus. It's going to fit with your understanding. If you're a Buddhist and you have that same kind of experience, you're probably not going to see Jesus. You're going to see a deity that fits that understanding. Maybe you'll see Kuan Yin. Maybe you'll see the Buddha. Whatever. Our, our understanding is going to fit with our, with our roots, our maternal roots. It's also going to fit with where we are in our life experience. So my poor little book here, look at this, it's falling apart. My poor little book, How to Know God, I've used this book for a hundred years, almost. <laughs> and what I like about this is Deepak Chopra invites us to consider that we're going to know God in lots of ways. So here we go, crash course. How to Know God, 101. How to Experience God, 101. So, there are seven ways that he says we experience God. And they are based on where we are in the moment. So, if you see yourself in fear, barely holding on, with survival at stake, you might need a God that shows up as Mother, Father, God, the Protector. You understand what I'm saying? That, that Mother, Father, God that sometimes can be punishing and judgmental, but that God that brings protection. So if, if someone in our life dies or is very, very sick, we may be on our knees asking that Mother, Father, God for help. Does, do you understand what I'm saying? We get to experience God in all these ways. Now the idea is to be able to expand the way we experience our version of God so that we are more and more inclusive. So if you, second one, if you see yourself as capable, as very powerful, and that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish, your God is going to be God the Almighty. Your God's going to be the one that makes the rules and makes the laws. And if you follow the rules, you're going to get what you want. See, it makes a difference where you are in your journey or what's happening in your life in that moment. Do you see how this works? So we go through and then all of a sudden, many people in this community have a God of peace, right? We, have, we see ourselves as centered. We see ourselves as calm. And we have an attachment to the God of peace, the one that brings that that calm presence, that silence. If you see yourself as growing, evolving, evolving, kind of like the law of attraction, as that, you're going to see the God that is going to help you along with that, the God that's going to push you to be, you know, your best self, God the Redeemer. You do it my way, you do it the right way, and we're going to, you know, you're going to get there. See yourself as somebody who makes personal dreams come true. You're going to have God the Creator. 
You're going to have God of miracles if you see yourself as kind of like enlightened. Maybe some of what Ramon was experiencing when he left the seminary, when you started seeing things in a very, the high vibration, right? The moment where things started looking very different to you. That sort of mystical perception, that transformative energy around God. And this is, the, this is the ultimate, and this is the one we strive for, and the one that's so darn hard, and the one we all talk about, but it's very hard to, to really live it and know it, is that, that God of, of a oneness, that unity where we're all one. Isn't that what we're all looking for? Where we see ourselves as all one, sort of that, that God of pure being. But I got this for you. We're going to be all of it, maybe within the same day. Our God's going to change based on our... What, what is real and useful to us in the moment. It's going to change on the spot in the moment. And our job is to be able to experience this awareness and wake up to it and feel it and know it without any boundaries. That's the idea. Because sometimes God comes through something very difficult. In my own life, I had one of those pure being experiences that lasted about two seconds. Mm -hmm. Hasn't come again was one of those white light experiences, and it came through a, through a, a tragic crisis, right? But I want to tell you something, that one experience, that white light experience, where I went, wow, everything dissolved, time went away, I got it that we're all part of this vibrating light, it immediately vanished, but, it, but the memory of that lingered. And so I keep trying to go back to, to find that that place again, I know it's possible, it's just that I haven't been able to sustain it. We can't sustain this thing, right? Do you hear what I'm saying? But but it comes suddenly, unexpected. That's God, like Linda said. That, that's a rose. No, that's God. That's God. That's God. And it's that unspoken knowingness that we've got within us that recognizes the power and presence of the divine right in the middle of whatever that thing is. Sometimes even it's a really scary, icky thing, we see the energy of the, of the divine. Beyond the surface of it, there's this inner knowing. I see the activity of God expressing through this thing. I see the activity of God in this experience. It's so easy to see it in the beauty of nature, yes? It's so easy to see it in a baby. And it's so easy to see when things are going so well, humming right along, following our plan. Not so easy when it's tough. Not so easy when it's tough. So, this is the thing. We get to interpret God on God's terms for us, make it useful, make it real. And there is this common ground where something happens where we're able to have our, our knowingness and our material experience of, of humanity and walking in the world kind of come together and they meet. And that is that what deep, um, Wayne Dyer calls the God gap. It's that place where it's that balance point between our human walk in the world and this energy of the divine presence, and we know that it's there in that, in that space. So here's your invitation. Ask yourself, in this moment in time, based on what's going on in my life, right now, today, this morning, this afternoon, how do you see your God? How are you seeing your God, your version of God, or light, or love, or whatever you call it? If you've recently lost somebody that you love, you're probably going to be seeing a different version of God than you would see if you were in nature with all of those animals. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. What's your experience right now? How do you know your experience of God and is it real and useful to you today? Are you are you getting it? Are you in touch with that? Are you making room for that? Are you like open to it or are you just going through life kind of blocked with a boundary? How are you experiencing the divine in your life right now? And this is the big thing. God is as we are. So if we're blocked, we're probably going to have some trouble opening to the presence and power of the divine. If we're in fear, God's going to show up as that one that's going to protect us. If we are totally serene and peaceful, God's going to show up as that one that brings forth that calm presence. Does that make sense? Yes. God matters. Your perception of God matters. Your experience of God matters. The way you know God matters. 
the bigger your God, the bigger your awareness of that energy that the divine is, the, the, the different your, your human experience will show up, the different your choices will be. You're going to do your life differently depending on how good your God is. Thank you.